John Lai is a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz. Before joining A16Z, John led North American Games Investments at Tencent. And before that, he was a senior product manager at Riot Games, makers of the mega hit League of Legends. Here are John's five tips for building a hit game based on what he's learned in his extraordinary career. We have a saying that every successful startup has both a product inside and a distribution inside. And I think that holds true for games and in general for tech products. On the product front, if I had to just sell it down into just one question, there would be, why does the world need this game or product? What makes this a 10x better product than what currently exists out there? And then on the distribution front, it's how will this product acquire its first million users? And founders that have compounding insights in both areas really caused me to be that. So Riot, the company that ended up joined that made League of Legends, you know, the founders who are obsessed with this popular Warcraft 3 mod called Defense of the Ancients or Dota. At the time, it was like really hard to install the mod and have to like manually match make of people. It was like even harder to learn to play, get hundreds of thousands of people or like downloading the mod and, and playing Dota. And the insight that the founders had at the time was that if you could just lower the barriers to entry, polish up the experience, it was a really fun gameplay group that already had product market fit with a deeply passionate community. And on the distribution front, they really had two innovation, which is one, they designed the game to be free to play at a time when that was a rarity in the West, where right? like most games were still sold as a premium title. You spent 50, $60 buying a game and then played it for a hundred hours. They were the first to say, hey, you know, we're going to actually make a great game for a PC audience and make it free to play and launch it in the West. They brought on a bunch of the original contributors from the Dota dev team. Um, and so in that way, they were able to tap into the existing Dota community to bootstrap the games, only cohort of players. That was very smart. It's not enough to just have a great game or a great product. You also need to have insights in the distribution front as well. Founders that can cover both and have insights in both areas. I'm immediately very intrigued by them and being in. A very common mistake that I see is startups that are just trying to do too much and they're not focusing enough. It's one of the non-obvious things that Riot did very well early on is focus. Because when they were fundraising, they had a bunch of investors tell them, oh, hey, like this League of Legends idea, it's a great one. You should make a Flash game too. You should put it on Facebook. Because at the time, Facebook games were really taken off. But they said no to all of those things. They stuck to their core focus, which is building the games specifically for a niche but very passionate community of Dota players on PC. I would rather have a team that focuses on super serving a small number of users versus a team that's trying to build a product that serves everyone in an above average way. One of my favorite product lessons came from a tour of HBO, actually. A studio head was talking about how they decide which TV shows to green light versus kill. And the usual practice involved making a pilot episode or two of a show and it's screening it with several randomly selected audience groups, right, who are asked to then grade the show on a number of dimensions, scale one through 10. Now you would think that the right way to do this is to select shows of the highest average ratings across the board. That's actually not true. The HBO insight was that it's actually better to select the show with really high ratings with small number of people, even if the average rating was quite low. Enjoying this? Give it a like. It'll help us bring you more stories like this. But if you think about it, it totally makes sense. We live in a world of digital abundance. We have too many products vying for our time and attention. So why would you watch a show that's just above average for you when you could instead watch a show that super serves users that are exactly like you? So in a similar vein, why didn't release League of Legends to be appealing to everyone? They built it specifically for a community of players early on. Fast forward even today, not every champion in League of Legends is designed to be appealing to everyone. Champions are designed that hit specific audience. And so early on, as a start of that focus, not only I think is it just a general sort of a good sort of product development practice to have, but I think it's just critical with small teams that are just getting going, they're trying to figure out what they want to build. You're not going wide right at the get there. You're going very deep and very narrow, and you're building the game specifically for this community of users, and they all love it. And essentially, they become your super users. They become the evangelists that then spread the game to their friends and their friends of friends, and eventually, they will go wide. 
I've always skeptical when I meet a team that's building a product or a game in an area where they themselves are not like avid consumers. There's like a cognitive dissonance there. I try to deeply understand the team's backgrounds, right? What have they built before? What games did they play today? Like how deeply have they gone down what we call the idea maze, which is how many different iterations of, an, of a product idea have you gone through? Another thing is just play your own game. When I visit game studios, one of the things I look for as I walk around is how many people are actually playing the studios on game. And it's very encouraging when there are lots of people that are just playing in their own time. And mostly, it's a big red flag when I walk around and I don't see anyone playing their own game. Or the only time they play is like some kind of mandatory company play test that takes place like once a month or once a week. Then when it comes to the development process itself, I think it's just so incredibly important that people are channeling the voice of the customer as early as possible in design and development. And one thing that I've seen that's very impactful is setting up a continuous iteration pipeline. And I think this is especially important when you're working with a creative product like a game. Because the debate ultimately on something like, oh, should this elephant be blue or gray? That can go on for weeks and just theory craft in a vacuum. But the minute you actually put the elephant into a live environment, people see how it looks against like, the environment, it against the other characters, animated, then all of a sudden it's a, the decision can become way easier. So it sounds trite, but I think it's just important to remember to be the customer, be our own customer as we build our products. And so things like the continuous innovation pipeline helps. So there you have it, John Lai's five tips for building a hit game. 13 years after release, League of Legends is still going strong with 180 million monthly active players, massive esports tournaments that attract as many as 45 million concurrent viewers. Those are huge numbers, and the team behind one of gaming's biggest hits didn't get there by trying to please everyone. Instead, they focused on super serving a small early group of customers and then grew from there. Would you like to learn how to do that? Check out our Game Thinking programs at GameThinking.io. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you in the next video.